Hi everyone, welcome back to Spring Boot Essentials by David Ojo. And in this video we are going to see how to connect to the database and authenticate against a user that is stored inside our table. So to start, uh, let's create here inside domain uh, a class that will represent the users. I will not call this class user because there are some vendors. Uh, for example, I had problem once with SQL Server on Microsoft when creating a table called user. So I will just call this uh, Dev Dojo user. Okay, so this Dev Dojo user, it's uh, a table, it's a class that will represent a table that will have our information stored inside. Basically, every time I'm trying to log in, I will go into this table, find the username, password and everything, and then I will authorize or not based on the information that I find. So for that, let's go to animate. Copy everything. And here I will use Spring user details. So this WWG user is a user details from Spring. And this is an interface, and you have to provide implementation methods. So as you can see here, there are some attributes that we have to provide. This is the, the full Spring implementation. So let's change a couple things here. This I will not add to the database just to keep this uh, simple. If they are false, you will get like unauthorized. So just return all of them uh, true, otherwise you will have problems when you are trying to authenticate. So make sure that each one of them is true. Now let's uh, create some attributes here. So the first attribute will be the ID. We need to generate this ID. We can copy the name as well. Let's copy the name. Just rename or just remove the message. Now, I will create a couple more attributes. For example, I would like one to be the username. And this one, it's ideally unique. And then, private string, password. Uh, I can create these authorities in several different ways. I could create a new table to store this data. I could have this stored in line. So I will just go with uh, in line here, string authorities, exactly this one. So if you want, you can copy, but put all our case. And we can copy this not empty to here, to here and also a uh, username. We are not going to create uh, some endpoints for this. We are just going to the database directly and add some information there. Okay, so authorities. We have to return an object that's this granted authority type. So there are a couple things that we could do here, but I will just go with split because it will be simple. So I will define that all the users will have like a real uh, role user and uh, or something role admin they will be comma separated so this is something that I am defining so basically I will go with arrays dot string and then authorities dot split and split when you find any comma and then I would like you to map these two simple granted authority new and return a list for that. Then for the password, this dot password, and for the username, this dot username. Make sure that you have everything true down here. Okay, so now we have our schema. I will start my database. And with this schema, I will just uh, I will let to initiate the or start the application later. There are a couple of things that we have to change here inside security config. So, so far we have been working with this configure with in memory authentication. But now we don't want in memory. We would like to work with uh, our database. And if you check the auth, you will see that we have this user detail service. Basically, this class is expecting a class that's user details because you have one method there that's load the user by username. So if we create a user details service that provides that method, we will be able to set this configure to load 
based on the information that we are defining. So let's do that. We have to do before that a connection to the database here through anime repository. Just rename it to dev dojo user repository. And I will copy this dev dojo user. And I will replace here. I will import. And I will replace this because it's going to return only one. I'm finding by username. And we said unique there. Okay, so we have the first repository. Now we have to create a service. Let's find the service. Cop anime service and call dev dojo user service. Okay, and then we can get rid of almost everything. Just create here one attribute private final dev dojo user repository dev dojo user repository. So this uh, dev dojo user service actually let's rename because I want things to be really clear dev dojo user details service because this is going to user <coughs> sorry details and provide an implementation sorry not user details user details service and provide implementation for load user by username so here we can call dev dojo user repository or we can be more explicitly optional dot of nullable username uh, user dev dojo user repository find by username username or else throw this guy So now we have, let's uh, go back, we created this devdojo user domain. It has ID, name, username, password, authorities, and then we try to set the security config. But security config is asking for a user detail service. So we, we came here to create a user detail service. We have to get the information from the database. So we created this devdojo user repository, file by username. And then we are auto wiring here inside of this service. And then when the security configuration, this authentication uh, of calls the load user by username, the method that will be triggered is this one. Now we just have to auto wire things here. So I will add one annotation required args constructor. And then I will add here private final that service that we just created cool now as you can see here i still have my password encoder because i will need it uh, i will just get this user that does your user details uh, service and with our password encoder is not with we pass this password encoder that's by default accepting several ones so we have several different types here that we could use but let's use this one so before i start my application i will go into the client i just want to generate one encrypted password and i will use i will use the bcrypt for that bcrypt or bcrypt i have no idea how to spell that so just uh, add here a quick salt new b and this is guy dot encode academy and you execute this class it will throw several errors but i just want to get the first line this one so copy everything and now i will go and start my service because it will generate the table inside my schema Okay, this is, oh, actually, this is the one that I was uh, looking for. So, when we use uh, this password encoder, let me explain here. So, basically, this password encoder, it uh, started from Spring 5. I think they added on Spring 5. Let's check here. Yeah. 
basically what this is doing is uh, you have several different types of password available that you can um, decrypt for example you can see here that we have this by uh, bcrypt and we have this password hashed now if we had more than one in our database we just have to change the beginning and then what's used to decrypt that password it's already coming here by this create delegating password encoder so since the one we just generated does not have this we just have to add when we add to our database so just refresh come here so uh, I think I'm using a different database let me just stop this one I will look at this database real quick this is basically what we're trying to achieve okay so let's uh, just add this so for example we just copied the password from what we have there let's go to the console and then where is the one that we were running okay I think we can copy this one then let me double check the password that we used security config is test it's okay we can then use academy and I will start the whole application Okay, so I will copy this entire password here. I will come here and I don't have anything. So authorities role user role admin name William password this password including the beginning and username I will add William. I will add another one. This one will be Dev Dojo Academy. I will use the same uh, password. And here the username is Dev Dojo. So now I will just make sure that I am submitting. And now that I have my application running, I will go here. Uh, before we go there, now let's go first. So let's uh, try to get anime. We have here authorization dev dojo. Okay, we got unauthorized. Let's double check. So get authorities. It's uh, returning no. So we can come here. Authorities dot split. Let's trigger the bug and let's see what's happening here. So authorities, it's completely no. So what we can do here? Let's double check what we have in the database. I'm not sure if it's only authorities. Oh, there you go. This guy will be only user. Now, make sure that you just send again. And as you can see, we have the data. And uh, we can log in with a different user. Let's log in with William. And again, we can get the results. Now let's go into the anime controller. Let me close everything. And here I will find by ID and I will just set this pre-authorize. This way I will know if the authorities that I have here in my table are actually working so I just change it I will reboot the application and then I will try to get enemy by ID and the user here will be dev dojo so it should fail because I'm requesting admin permission to execute this request and as you can see I have forbidden but if I try to log in with William I am able to pass it means that my uh users that i have in the database are working so just one extra cool feature um, about this the spring supports several 
authentication providers. So for example, if I go back to my security config and I would like to have in memory and this guy, my user detail service, I could just remove the comments and I will add here devdojo2 and william2. Now that I have these two, uh, Spring will try to authenticate against this one first and then if this fails, it will try this one. If both fails, then we fail for good. Let's try this. So I will try first with devdojo2 and I got forbidden and then I will try with william2 and I get allowed and then I will try with william or better devdojo forbidden and william I can get the results. So now you know how to get data from the database to authorize and authenticate your uh, users. And even now, you know how to use two different uh, ways of doing the authentication. So in memory, and now with a custom user details. So I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Bye.